cross product between two vectors, say like A and B, comes up a lot when you're studying about magnetism. So in this video here, we'll just give a little rundown of the cross product. Much of the stuff you may remember from your calculus class or be a little rusty on, but let's just give a rundown of some of the salient features of the cross product. The first thing about the cross product is that these are often two vectors here that you, you know something about. So generally speaking, A and B here are known. So just two vectors that are, have some other role in the problem that are typically known about. But in order to get a result here, you have to take the cross between A and B and get vector C. So there's two questions here. The first one is what magnitude does vector C have? In other words, how strong is that vector going to be? And the second thing you have to know is what about the direction of C? And so what we're really asking is that the obviously the result of a cross product of two vectors is another vector. And vectors, of course, have magnitude and directions. And so by asking what the magnitude and direction is of C, we just want to know how we can get a handle on the full vectorness of C there. So the first thing is that depending on your situation here, the magnitude of C can sometimes be found by looking at the magnitude of vector A and looking at the magnitude of vector B and multiplying them, then multiplying those by the sine of the angle between A and B. So theta here is going to be the angle between A and B. Whatever it is, you have to look at your problem. But this is one way to knock out that magnitude of the cross product. This will tell you the strength of vector C. And this isn't anything that has to do with physics. This is just mathematically what the cross product means. But sometimes finding this angle between A and B can be kind of hard. At this point, we'll just sort of leave that to uh, the particular problem you may be working on. So the second point here is what about the direction of C? Well, what you should probably do in this case here is maybe get on Wikipedia or look in your calculus book or physics book. Look up something called the right-hand rule. There are several versions of the right-hand rule, and whichever one you're most comfortable with will help you nail down the direction of C. So in lieu of the right-hand rule, to get more of sort of a model going here, what I'm going to do is show a little popsicle stick device I made that helps me get the cross products figured out. So all I did here was take a couple of cross, uh, popsicle sticks, this one here, this one here, and I glued them together at 90 degrees. And I took another dowel here or another popsicle stick and sort of glued that on to the other two, also at 90 degrees. So what I sort of have here are three direction pointers that are all mutually locked at 90 degrees. And something like this is extremely useful for figuring out what the dot product, excuse me, for figuring out the direction of this final cross product here. The dot product is another vector operation which we're not covering here. Sorry about that. So you can make one of these out of cardboard or paper or you could use your fingers with this. I'll show you, sort of show you how this model here relates to the right hand rule in just a second. But let me tell you how this thing works here. So the way this will work then is as follows here. Suppose I'm taking the cross product of A and B. I have two popsicle sticks onto these two ends here labeled A and B. So what it means then is that if I'm taking the cross product of A and B, I'll always point this popsicle stick, this one that labeled A, in the direction of the A vector, the way it may apply to a problem. And I'll try to orient the B in the orientation of the other vector that I'm crossing with, the B vector. And no matter how that works out, because these things are locked at 90 degrees, this third vector here, which is sort of labeled C right there on the top, will always point in the direction of that eventual vector C like that. So, let's look at an example then of the cross rock here. Again, we're trying to get the direction of C. That's usually the hard thing that students have the most trouble with here. So remember, you're always crossing A into B. The order sort of matters here. So C is equal to A crossed into B. So let's look at a couple of examples here of how this might work. Okay. First example here is something like this. Suppose we have an A vector pointing this way. Whatever it is, could be a velocity or momentum or anything like that. And suppose vector v, B points down like this. So the question, if I was going to cross A into C, what would the direction be? Well, get out my popsicle stick unit here. I will point the first popsicle stick in the direction of vector A like that, easy enough to do. Now I have to get the second popsicle stick in the direction of vector B. So I can't really just do this because then vector A becomes misaligned. I have to keep this vector A like that. Looks like the only way I can possibly get this popsicle stick here, B, to be aligned with this vector B is to rotate the whole thing upside down like this. So remember, this is A and this is B. Now these things are locked at 90 degrees, so I can't quite get them to line up. This is the best I'll do here. A points over this way. This thing was rotatable. I could get it to line up with B. But in either case, I still see my C vector pointing down into the page. So in this case here, the C vector 
would point down into the page like that. That's the direction C would point like that. And remember when I draw crosses or dots like this, these crosses here are meant to represent what a vector would look like as it's moving away from you. You'd see its feathers. And then so that's what the tail would look like moving away from you. And if I draw a dot like that, that would be the arrow, tip of the arrow coming at you like that. So this is the answer to this one right here. So I can look at a very similar problem here. Suppose A is over here like this, and just suppose B was sort of pointing up like that. Where would C be now? Once again, I get my model out. A points in the direction of the first vector. Uh, if I could imagine B sort of rotating, closing this angle a bit like that, I can sort of get them pointing in a direction like that. But in either case, I see C pointing straight up like that. So the answer to this is straight up like that. So that's when A and B are in the same plane. Let's look at an example like this now. Suppose A is coming out at us. So this is an example of an A vector that's coming straight up at us like this. And let's put vector B maybe over here like this. So B will sort of be in the plane still like that. So there's a vector B there. Where is vector C? What is the direction of A cross C? No reason to panic. Just going to use my little tool here. I'm going to point my first popsicle stick up here in the direction of A, straight up at me like that. Oh, lucky for me, look how convenient it is. B points straight over like that, pointing this way. So it's all set up. It looks like my C, my resultant vector, is pointing straight down like that. So the answer to this product would be vector C is going to point straight down like that. So see all kinds of combinations like that. Let's maybe do one more. And then I'll show you how it sort of relates to some of those right-hand rules that we have floating around out here. So here's an example three or four or something, whichever one I'm on here. Let's say vector B is going into the page like that, and A is pointing straight up. I'm just totally picking these examples at random here, and I'm just going to work through them here. So once again, not going to panic about where C is. I'm going to get my model out like this, and I'm going to say, hey, there's A pointing straight up like that. Looks like B is into the page, so I'm going to rotate the whole thing so that this B vector right here points down into the page. It looks like my C vector is pointing over into the right, so the answer to this cross product is that vector C is going to be pointing over like that. So those, that's my answer right there. And that's how I can always figure out what the cross product is. Now, what does this thing have to do with a right-hand rule? Hopefully you'll uh, get on Wikipedia or look in your book and get some version. If you don't build one of these and I don't know, maybe your professor won't allow you to take it into the exam or something. You have to rely on just your hands here. But here's one way of doing it here. So remember, C is O is equal to A cross B. So one way you can always do it is like this. Take your right hand only and point your fingertips, your fingertips here, in the direction of that first vector, in the direction of the A vector like this. And then if you imagine curling your fingers, so curling them so that you hypothetically imagine the A vector rotating, into the smallest angle that would cause it to rotate into the B vector like this. So A into B, your thumb here points in the direction of that C vector like that. So let's maybe look at an example we'll do with a right-hand rule here. This is one version of the right-hand rule. There's several, but this is just one here. Um, I think we had one like this. Here's vector B like this. Here's vector A pointing up like that. Where would vector C be? Well, like I said, fingertips in the direction of A and you have to imagine curling your hands in the direction that would make A cross into B. Now remember, this is the tail of B, so B is pointing way into the page like this. So if I move my fingertips in the direction of A, I'd have to curl my hands sort of down like that to imagine this vector A rotating into the plane of the whiteboard to hit vector B, which is sticking into the plane like that. And in either case, my thumb then points in this direction here. So just like I got before, vector C would point over that way like that. It might be easier to go back to one of those simple planar models that we did earlier in this video here. So here's A and here's B like this. This one's almost too easy here, but if you point your fingertips in the direction of A and curl it so that A touches B this way, there's my thumb up again. So just like we got before, vector C is going to point straight up and out of the page. I'll sort of end the video here, because there, but there is one more version of the cross product which you may like to use depending on, and it just sort of uh, relies on orientation of your three fingers like this the index finger, your middle finger, and your thumb like this. And the way this one can remember it is very similar, of course. This is probably the most portable one you can bring into an exam, but you have to get the order right. Remember, you point your, just remember you point your, in this case, your index finger in the direction of the first vector, or A, your middle finger in the direction of B, and your thumb will always point in the, result, in the direction of the result in there. So just notice that holding my hand like this is very similar to just sort of holding this, this wooden thing in my hand. See, there's A, there's B, and there's C like that. So you can just, using your hand, go work on any of these combinations you want. So, for example, on this one right here, A is up. That's my index finger pointing up. 
B is into the page, there's my middle finger pointing into the page, there's C pointing over that way, so it works. Here's another one right here. A is in the direction of my index finger. B is in the direction of my middle finger right here, something like this, but there's my thumb pointing straight up again, so there's the C vector in there. So the only thing you have to remember with the right hand rule is get some version that you like. Depending on which source you look at, there'll be different assignments for the fingers. I like the one that this is the first vector, the second vector, and the resultant vector right here. Remember always to use your right hand, not your left hand. For you right-handed people who are taking an exam, maybe you have the pen or pencil in your right hand. Don't use your left hand. Everything will be backwards like that. Um, so whatever the case may be with a cross product, build yourself a model, use your hand, whatever, but just be sure that whenever you see two vectors being crossed into each other, you know how to find the direction of that resultant vector. It's very important, particularly in physics when you're studying magnetism.